I'm uh, from the Netherlands. I work at iTunes Mobile, and I'm going to talk to you about something called Calabash. Just a quick show of hands. Do any of you already know anything about Calabash? Some? All right, cool. Um, yeah, let's just go. I work at iTunes Mobile, as I said. I've been working as an Android developer there since 2009. I'm still loving it. That's why I'm here. Um, at the company, uh, we're working on a framework which we're using for most of our uh, applications, which allows us to um, port or write an application for Android and easily port it for iOS, which is going to be native. I, um, I was asked to mention it and leave it in the slides so you can have a look at it. If you're interested, come, to me, come and talk to me after the presentation, but this is not what the presentation is going to be about. All right, in my spare time, I like to do a bit of bike riding. You probably saw um, my belly. Yeah, I don't do it enough, but uh, I still enjoy doing it. I also like to play some games. Um, I think someone in the first row might might have seen that I like playing games, Sebastiano. Um, yeah, that's that's what I do in my spare time. So that was about me, and this is about where you're going to be uh, hearing from me. Uh, something about testing in general, why you should test, uh, what what why it makes sense to test. Uh, I'm going to be um, comparing some frameworks, uh, something called Cucumber and Gherkin. It's very healthy for you. Um, something more about Gherkin, done a little demo, done something about how you can apply uh, Calabash into your continuous integration, and then questions, but please, if you have any questions during the presentation, just show your hand and the young lady will give you a microphone so you can talk. Uh, I'm going to be having it a little bit uh, interactive, so I'm going to be asking you stuff and you can show hands if you like, and if you don't, then that's fine too. All right. Um, testing. Have any of you seen some similar uh, errors after having struggled for weeks to get your application into the Play Store? And um, have, have any of you seen that? Yeah? Did you uh, nearly have this sort of reaction to it? Like, shit, what happened? Well, you don't want that to happen. And there is things you can do before actually going into production to prevent things that could happen. So uh, there is things like unit testing, manual functional testing, monkey testing. Those are the things I'm going to be uh, shortly going through now. Unit testing, I think, can you, can you show hands if you use it, know it, unit <laughs> testing? Yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. That's, uh, that's good. Well, what this bit of code does, it just uh, tests if um, 1 plus 1 is 1, uh, is 2. And if that's not the case, then this test should fail and you know that somewhere something got broken and your calculator is not doing what you expect it to do. Manual functional testing, we all do it, I think. You just go through your application, you see if what you just created um, works as you expect it to work, and if something goes wrong, then that's something you're going to be tackling. Um, what you use then is an actual human and a device or an emulator. The picture on the right shows the devices that we are testing on when we test our applications. It's quite a, a broad range. We don't test it on all of them, but we pick specific ones which are good for our uh, product. Okay, uh, show of hands. <coughs> Who of you have a monkey at home? <laughs> you do. Nice. I, I, I want to hire that monkey to do my monkey testing then. <laughs> Anyway, um, have any of you heard of Monkey Runner? That's your monkey, exactly, good. Well, what Monkey Runner does, it just, um, it goes through your application, but it also goes outside of your application and it just clicks random stuff. As you can see on the picture, this monkey uh, finds whole different ways of using a phone than most of us would think of using a phone. So there is, there is things that you uh, might find using Monkey Runner. Um, 
which you maybe wouldn't have found beforehand. All right, automated functional testing. Uh, two slides back, I mentioned going through your application manually and uh, going through the stuff you just added to your application, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can automate that as well, which makes sense for rep repetitive uh, things. There is quite a lot of frameworks out there. I'm going to go through some of those. Um, I'm sure there is more, but those are the ones that um, we are we were curious in when looking into. Uh, frameworks that can do that for us. Any questions about the previous uh, things, or is it still uh, all clear? And yeah, all right, good. Um, this is uh, this is a yeah a, a big list. I'm just gonna go through some small details, some pluses and minus minuses, and keep in mind we wanted to. Uh, for our company, we wanted to test it on an actual device and not on an emulator, and uh, we wanted to um, test on Android version 2.3 and higher. So that's that's why, for us, the, uh, the the pluses and minuses are there. So first, we got an instrumentation test runner. This is actually the the, the sort of basics uh, when you start developing Android. This is what you will find in the the manuals which you could use. Uh, test run on device and emulator. Uh, it's a pretty solid and comprehensive um, tool you can use, a framework you can use, but it's it's it doesn't have many convenience methods. So there is there is a bit of, of programming you need to do to get an actual um, step to um, to work in your test because it runs on an emulator and or or on a device. It's relatively slow. There, there will be quite a couple of frameworks in the next slides that have this same uh, minus. Yeah, just, uh, just for you to know. All right, um, who have you heard of Robotium? Good. Um, yeah, Robotium is actually sort of built on top of the the previous one, uh, so it's also. Uh, solid comprehensive. It has the same pluses and minuses as the previous one. Well, not the same minuses because this one does have um, convenience method methods which make make it easier to do the functional uh, part of the testing. Uh, build on top here. Yeah. Has to run on device or emulator for us as a plus because that's what we wanted to do. That's what we. That's how we wanted to test. Relatively slow because of it. Okay, um, who have you seen Forrest Gump? Cool. Oh. I, I, I bet you there is going to be less people that use <coughs> Roboelectric. Who have you used Roboelectric? Told you. Okay, well, um, the, the nice thing about this and about Forrest Gump is that it runs really fast when it needs to. Um, it doesn't run on a device or emulator. So that's that's what makes it fast. Uh, so for us, this wasn't uh, something we would use because we wanted to test it on a device. Okay, UI Automator, something which has sort of recently, relatively recently, um, been announced. I haven't looked into it very much yet because it requires Android 4.1 or higher, but it's definitely worth a check. So. Uh, Check it out. And something else which has more recently been uh, in the sort of spotlights is something called Espresso. And as you might see by the picture, I don't know much about Espresso just yet, um, but also this is definitely worth a check. I also like tea, so. Okay, now a Calabash. This is probably what you all came for. Um, so now you've seen it. Now we can go right, or, or do you want to know something about Calabash? Anywho, um, you didn't need to have too much technical knowledge to write Calabash tests. We will see that soon. We'll go through some examples. Uh, it uses Robotium, which is uh, solid comprehensive. You don't need to do any uh, Robotium-based test writing yourself. Uh, support for Android, but also iOS, which is for us a very 
uh, big plus because we write applications for iOS and Android and also for mobile web uh, at our company, um, which means that if you write a Calabash test for Android, then you can easily port it to iOS, and if you do it right, then you don't even need to do anything, which is great if you create applications for more uh, OSs. Uh, the downside is it needs a bit of installation and configuration. Uh, you need to have a little bit of knowledge of Ruby, which I didn't when I started, so that was a bit of a, an interesting one for me. Um, the app that you will be testing needs internet permissions, um, which could be a minus for people. And because it runs on a device or an emulator, it's relatively slow again. Okay, that's what we did so far. Are there any more questions? No? Okay. Then we'll go into uh, this cucumber and gherkin. It's a bit uh, weird. When I first heard of cucumber and gherkin, I was like, well, uh, what? Well, it's, it's pretty easy. Cucumber is um, a Ruby-based tool which uh, allowed you, allows you to run functional tests and it understands the Gherkin language, which is a natural language, uh, which means that you don't need to code Java or you don't need to code um, anything else necessarily, but you can use actual words that non-technical people can understand. All right, let's say we have an application. Uh, the first screen you see is a login screen. Uh, you can fill in a username and password. You have a login button. And after having logged in, you will see a list of 20 items. Um, I advise you not to use names as item six because it doesn't make sense and no one understands what it is. But um, for this um, example, this is what we're gonna be uh, talking about in the next slide, so keep this in mind, the login screen and then 20 items in the next screen. All right, um, I'm going to talk about Gherkin now, and Gherkin is um, sort of the way you form your, your testing. So what you first uh, define is something called a feature, and what a feature does is, what, what, if, what you describe in a feature is, um, something that is about a specific part of your application, a specific feature of your application. So for example, uh, we have a login feature, so what we will be doing in that is test uh, the login, maybe even the logout mechanism, uh, see if errors occur, if uh, what happens when, uh, when you log in with wrong credentials, if that is handled as you expect it to do. Same goes for the options, so the 20 items in the list, you can uh, check if there is actually 20 items and if the items that are in there um, are really in there. So what you can, what I actually just said is that there is specific scenarios you can perform in uh, features like that. So for example, when you do login, you can see what happens if no credentials were filled in whatsoever, uh, wrong credentials, correct credentials, uh, log off. So this is specific for that part of the application. Uh, features. There is one item in the list which is called don't long press this and yeah you want to see what happens when someone does long press it for example. Um, when you define uh, scenarios like that there are steps you need to take. So for example when you log in with no credentials what you will essentially be doing is pressing the login button and see what happens. Same goes for when you log in with the right credentials. What you will be doing is filling something in in the field that has the hint username and filling something in in the field that has the hint password and then you press the login button and see what happens. Was that clear so far, this? Make sense? All right, good. So, in short, you create a feature file for each feature, so each part of your application. You define scenarios in these feature files. You define a step or more steps per scenario. And this is an actual example of uh, the options screen feature 
So that's the one with the 20 items in the list. Um, I'm going to go through it step by step. So what we see in the first three lines, and the first line we see the definition of a feature. So what you define as feature um, development, I don't know, that character after feature, I don't know the name in English, but uh, uh, that and then the sort of name that describes what that feature um, is about. So in this case, it's the, fe the options to screen. Uh, the lines after, which can be over uh, two lines, but in my case two lines was enough, will sort of uh, describe what the expected behavior of um, that feature is. Afterwards, like I said before, you will be defining a scenario or more scenarios. This is one scenario. And on line six, we define the scenario and what you see here again is like um, an egg explanation of what that scenario will be testing. Um, on line one and line six, those are just names. So those won't perform any actual steps, actual actions. So nothing will be pressed, nothing will be filled in. This is just for you to know what is being tested and um, what it should be doing. What we see on line five is uh, tags. You can tag scenarios. So let's say you have um, multiple features, but some of them have sort of um, similar functionality, but they belong in a different part of your application. Then you can use tags, and when you run Calabash, uh, you can use those tags to specify th those are the types of uh, things I would like to test. So and it won't go through all the features and all the scenarios, but it will go uh, through the specific tagged scenarios. All right, and then uh, this, um, it seems quite a lot, but maybe I, I might actually just, uh, just ask someone, is there anyone in the audience who would like to um, sort of tell me what you think that happens here if you keep in mind the uh, login screen and the options screen. Is, is, anyone, is there anyone in the audience who thinks um, that the, it doesn't make sense? Makes sense, right? Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I thought it too. Well, uh, let's, let, let me go through it. Um, line seven, given I logged in as a, value, uh, a valid user. Uh, let's go f actually first through the, the sort of red, pinkish uh, words. Uh, given when then, those are uh, names or, or uh, things that come at the beginning of your step. So like I said before, when you log in with, uh, with right credentials, um, you fill in username and your password. The given name of the given word um, sort of specified the initial state of your application. So let's say um, we are going to be testing our options screen. We assume that we went to the options screen and we are a logged in user because that's the flow. We log in, then we get to the options screen. So the given sort of sets the initial state. We are in the options screen now and when is what you define um, the action that needs to be taken. So, um, I long press, don't long press this. That's what, uh, what will be done. Then afterwards you will see, uh, usually you will see then, and that sort of specifies what you expect. So first you have a, a state, then you perform an action, and then you see what the action uh, did, so what the reaction was to that action. You can uh, combine uh, these three words with and and but, so you can say, well, like you see in line 9 and 10, you can see, say, I see something called message, but I also, of, and, and I see long press, but I should not see welcome. So, still clear up till now? Yeah? Okay. If you have any questions, just uh, raise your hands and then uh, I will answer them gladly. Okay, so what we see in line 7, uh, 
27 is a custom step and the other lines are canned steps. Well, uh, let me go into canned steps first. Canned steps are steps that are provided by the Calabash framework, which means that um, the, the sentences are known by Calabash, so you didn't need to do anything to get those working. So, for example, I see, and then something um, in quotes, that is uh, understood by Calabash, um, which means that you don't need to do any custom coding for that. I mentioned earlier that there is some knowledge needed for, uh, some Ruby new knowledge needed that is for the custom steps. So Calabash doesn't know what a valid user is. So I defined here in, uh, on line seven, I defined given I logged in as a valid user. Calabash doesn't know that. So there is something you can do to create custom steps that will, for example, fill in the right username, the right password, and then press the login button. That's what it does. Um, there we go there. Is this uh, still clear? Yeah? All right. Seems like I'm doing a bit of a good job. Um, like the custom step. This is actually the custom step that we saw in the previous uh, example. Uh, the previous slide. Um, yeah, this is, is a bit bit overwhelming, especially if you don't have any, any Ruby knowledge. It got me quite a bit, uh, it took me quite a bit to actually get this up and, and running like this. But you define a custom step in a separate file, and Calabash picks that one up. And what you see in, in line three is the actual sentence that Calabash will eventually understand. So if you go back to this slide, given I logged in as a valid user, once you define a custom step like this, Calabash understands it if you um, make sure that the code in between the do and the end on line 3 and line 15 is, uh, is correct. Um, line 5 defined what should happen. On line 6 there is something um, there is an if statement, and what it essentially does, it checks um, if there is an edit text with a hint username, and if there is an edit text with the hint, uh, the hint text password. And if that's the case, we assume that we are in the login screen, because in my application there is only one login screen that has a username and a password hint text fielded page. So, what we see on line 9 to 12 is actually what I sort of uh, discussed before. You fill a um, username in, you fill a password in, you fill, uh, you press the login button, and then you wait up to 10 seconds to see if the next activity, in this case, the options screen, uh, w appears. Yeah, question over there. By the, by the handsome young man. Thank you. Um, I have a question. The lines 9 to 12 are candid steps? Yeah. Can, well, they, can they also be custom steps? Yes, they can. Okay. Um, I don't have it in this example, but yes, it can. But um, you have to make sure that they are known. So what you see in line uh, 1, you sort of make sure that um, it's known in the general Calabash steps kind of thing. Okay. So once that, once you've done that, I'm, yeah, you can. I think, yeah, I have an example in my uh, code that sort of uses, um, uh, actually, the line 9 and 10 are not canned steps. They, these are steps that I defined. So Calabash doesn't have uh, canned steps to bind and edit text by a hint uh, name. So those are 9 and 10 are can step, uh, non are custom steps. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Apart from the Ruby syntax, is this also sort of clear? Yeah? All right, cool. Who of you know Ruby? Use it. Okay. I think it's the same people that raised their hands just now, so uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Um, it's demo time, and as uh, lots of you know, 
demo gods are often not with us. So what I did, I prepared a, a video of a demo that I did, just in case the demo gods are not with us. Uh, but you can still see the the power of uh, Calabash. What we see on the right is an emulator. What we see on the left is um, a terminal, or uh, I didn't even know the name of Montline something, and. Um, what we see at the top, it's a bit hard to, can I make this more full screen? It's a lot more full screen. Anywho, um, you see, okay. just a second, I'm going to see if I can sort of zoom in. Well, the line behind this uh, black bar is what we're looking for. Is that readable at all? Oh, that's good. Okay, because here it looks a bit blurry, but maybe it's just me being tired or I don't know. Anyway, uh, what you see first is um, the command Calabash Android. Um, in case you are developing or, 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 use, or testing on iOS, you need to run a different command. I think it's Cucumber. But anyway, let's talk about Android, because we're at DroidCon. Um, Calabash Android, then you say run, because you want to run a Calabash test. And then you specify the APK file that you want to be testing. Um, what I defined here as well is the specific feature that I want to test. So in this case, that's the option feature. And I defined a specific tag. I actually just want to check uh, the long press tag. I'm going to zoom out again uh, so you can see the emulator. I'm going to try uh, to zoom out in any case. Yeah. Okay. So it will be going a little bit fast, but what you'll see on the left on the terminal is the steps that are being performed uh, from Calabash, and on the right you see them being performed on the emulator. This is also recorded at the same time, so. Um, this, this is how you will see it as well when you use Calabash. So what I just performed is uh, the log login. And as you can see on the left side, given I logged in as a valid user, is green, which means that it went well. I see long press. I see that on the right side in the message box. But I should not see welcome. I didn't see welcome. Which okay. Don't long press this text. I should see well done. I see that in that uh, alert dialog. And that's actually it. That's that's one test but instead of having to do this manually you just wrote text that's readable by most people um, which 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 makes it easier to start writing tests we had a tester in that didn't know any technical stuff but he could write tests for us this way so yeah that's pretty easy right What's it to? What? Five minutes? No. Let's go back to the presentation. All right. Um, do you, do any of you before I dive into continuous integration? Do any of you have any tests about Calabash and how it works and how it should work, or was that clear enough? Yeah. All right. Uh, continuous integration. Who of you do it? Use it. That's good. You're doing good. Yeah. Um, 
Well, we do too. And there wasn't a Maven plugin to um, use your Calabash or, or start your Calabash tests from, for example, Jenkins and a colleague of mine, colleagues of mine, uh, and I wrote a plugin which we still need to uh, open source, which will be open source soon next next week. Next week, that's a colleague. Next week, he's he's going to be doing it, right? I'm not going to, yeah, he's going to do it. Nah, it's going to be um, uh, open source in any case. Um, and this allows you, do, do all of the people that just raise their hands uh, also use Jenkins for their continuous integration? Or, yeah, good. Um, there is already a Cucumber Reports plugin available. And in, com um, in combination with the Maven plugin, we now have tests that run continuously. This is what the Cucumber um, Reports plugin looks like. So what you will see is uh, the past um, steps, the failed steps, the skipped steps, pending. I, I don't even know what that is. Never saw, never seen it. Um, but you see nice graphs, but you can also click into stuff. So if you look at the left bottom, you see like a table. And if you click on login feature, you will see uh, the scenarios and steps that are, were performed. I think you actually see something like that on the right. You see the login feature and you see where stuff went wrong. Um, also from Calabash you can, uh, for example, create print screens which will also be shown in this uh, little tool, little uh, plugin. That was actually it for me for today. Are there any more questions or was it all uh, very clear? Yes. The other handsome young man in the front. Um, at the end there, you showed uh, the Maven plugin. Yeah. What about Gradle? Um, that's that's something on my uh, on my <laughs> wish list. Well, when when we at, at the moment we're not using Gradle actively uh, at all, and I think it should be uh, be there, but I cannot promise that it will be next week. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, but it's definitely worth uh, having it, especially because it seems like everyone is going to towards Gradle. And yeah, makes sense. Good question. Other questions? No. Okay. Then um, if you want to get in contact with me, you can. I can you can best find me on um, Google Plus. I will also post the slides of this presentation on there and I think the organization will be sharing the slides as well I'm not sure but um, thank you very much for your time No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.